Last time, I explored how bad science has taught generations of men that your penis is much smaller than it really is, and the truth about size. The interest in size and enhancement reflects deep-seated societal and personal concerns about masculinity and self-image. Half of men wish they were bigger even when they're average, even though 85% of women are satisfied by their partner's size. Massive demand for penis enlargement has fueled both real clinical research and a range of non-evidence-based, risky solutions. There are hundreds and thousands of studies out there, of variable quality and using inconsistent methods, but doctors and scientists have managed to systematically distill down the research to only the studies of high enough quality to be useful for formal evidence-based recommendations. There are many methods studied for increasing penis length and girth. These methods include non-surgical treatments, surgical treatments, and a combination of approaches. Some of these are pretty extreme. So what are doctors now being told to recommend? What can you do that works safely? Here's the process that real urologists, doctors focusing on men's health, will follow to find the right approach for you if you ask for help with a small penis. I've boiled this down for you. First, rule out medical conditions like erectile dysfunction or Peyronie's disease, curved painful erections. Second, using the right measuring technique, understand how you compare to other men. Here's a tip from my other video. The average is probably around 5 inches, and less than 10% of men have 6 inches or more. Third, the vast majority of men wanting to increase their size are actually normal, yet they still obsess over it. And these men really benefit from counselling. So reflect, and check whether you could have diagnosable small penis anxiety or even penis dysmorphia, requiring mental health treatment. Finally, based on all of this, the doctor will recommend the right treatment for you. To keep this video short, I'm going to assume you don't have a physical or mental health condition and focus on increasing length. If you're a normal, healthy adult man with a normal package, what is safe and effective for increasing penis length? I've reviewed and summarized the guidelines and augmented them based on something massive they miss out. More on that later. Here's the summary. What methods work, if they can be recommended, and why. The TLDR. One of the only things proven to work that can be recommended is something called penile traction therapy, which provides results on par with surgery, but without going under the knife. Vacuum pumps do not work for length in normal healthy men. Surgery may provide gains, but is extremely controversial and unethical, with high patient dissatisfaction rates, high risk of complications and corrective surgeries, and an unacceptable cost-benefit profile. It should only ever be explored in experimental clinical trials, and many doctors think it should never be practiced. So what's this penile traction therapy, and how much could you realistically gain? This involves traction devices, or extenders, which apply a gentle stretch to the penis over extended periods. This is a bit like ear stretching. However, different tissues respond differently to chronic traction. In response to the tension, the tissues adapt on a cellular and structural level through cell proliferation, resulting in tissue expansion without cellular trauma. So how effective is it? I've summarized the relevant studies referenced in the guidelines. So far, it's just three studies covering less than 100 men in total and their experimental single arm studies without control groups. There are many other studies out there, but they're often conducted by the people making the devices, or they're otherwise low quality. We still need large-scale, randomized control trials. With that caveat out of the way, the men in these studies were a broad range of ages, and had, on average, average size penises, or were just below average. Researchers had men wear these devices for 4-6 to six hours per day for 3-6 to six months, with two studies having longer-term follow-up. Average increases ranged between 1.3 to 1.7 centimeters, or 0.5 to 0.7 inches, for flaccid stretch length, which is a proxy for erect length. Only one study reported erect gains, finding an average gain of 1.2 centimeters, or half an inch, after six months. These results are comparable to surgery. Plus, unlike surgery, patients reported modest satisfaction and improved erection quality. This is not effective for girth, though. These length increases were permanent at three to six months post-treatment, and even up to three years in one study. Gains vary between men, possibly due to differences in tissue elasticity, or inadequate or incomplete use of the devices. The devices were much safer than surgery, too. Side effects were rare, but transient and went away quickly. Think bruising, pain, numbness due to the device. Only 10% of men dropped out of treatments, mostly due to the device being uncomfortable or perceived or real lack of efficacy. Much like going to the gym, it looks like men experience newbie gains when they first start. The rate of increase was very high in the first month, up to about a centimetre, with a slower rate of increase after that. And much like the gym, there's considerable commitment required. The 2011 study offered the device to 100 men coming to their clinic, 
but only 23 accepted the invitation, with the authors thinking that this is probably due to the commitment required. Overall, penis extenders are effective for lengthening the penis with minimal side effects, but requires consistent use over time. However, the gains are significant. For the study reporting changes in erect length, the baseline length was 12.9 centimeters, or 5.1 inches, and permanently increased to 14.2 centimeters, or 5.6 inches, or a whopping 10% increase in just six months of use. For a comparison to another metric important to men, that's like someone who's six foot tall becoming six foot seven, or going from 183 to 201 centimeters tall. It's possible that longer term use could provide even further gains, but more on that later. Extender gains in normal men are also supported by studies in Peyronie's disease and erectile dysfunction, which show a relationship between the duration of traction and length gains and the possibility of efficacy using shorter durations if using a more advanced device. This supports the idea that length gains are proportional to the duration and tension, or overall volume of force applied. The penis enhancement community has been practicing this stuff for a very long time. These communities use a range of devices, techniques, and protocols. Some have taken the idea of traction therapy using extenders and built upon it, aiming to reach a goal of overall force applied by tinkering with tension and duration. To that end, some men have developed and marketed their own extenders, stretching devices meant to be worn all day discreetly at lower tension, as well as hanging weights from their penises for higher tension. I can't recommend hanging weights from your penis due to the safety concerns and lack of study data, when penis extenders are shown to be a safe alternative. But overall, there is extensive anecdotal evidence of traction therapy working for men over multiple years, including photos which I can't really show uncensored here. If you choose to explore these online communities, bear in mind, people are unlikely to report a lack of effect, while hyper-responders will receive more attention. You can't trust anything without photos, which can be faked or taken strategically. People that make devices or supplements have an incentive to overpromise. So this stuff works, but what if you don't want to wear a device on your penis for hours every day? Well, these medical guidelines missed an easy and safe way to increase length, which I think is pretty crazy. Let's go back to measuring the penis. To really know how long your penis is, you need to measure from the pubic bone to the tip, called the bone press length. However, the difference between this measurement and the length from the base to the tip, the non-bone press length, tells you the depth of the pubic fat pad. If your non-bone press length is 4 inches, but your bone press length is 6, then you could gain anywhere up to 2 inches by targeting the fat pad. Of course, you can't get the whole 2 inches, unless you stripped away all the skin and underlying tissue, but the gains can still be significant. The fat pad changes in size depending on how much fat you're carrying. This is why fat or obese men look like they have smaller penises, because more of it is buried and hidden, and likewise why skinny or fit men are associated with larger penises, because more of it is on display and usable. Therefore, weight loss doesn't just provide a range of health benefits, it also makes your penis bigger. I couldn't find an evidence-based estimate of the relationship between weight loss and penis gains, but Panuma, a penis implant company, says one inch for every 30 to 50 pounds or 14 to 23 kilos lost. You can see actual uncensored before and after transformation pics online in communities like the appropriately named r slash weight loss dick gains. But weight loss can be hard, and even if you slim down, you're still going to have some fat there. This is where things can get crazy. Doctors have explored techniques to reduce this fat pad without weight loss. One way is surgery, so stuff like liposuction, which works, but this comes with major risks. Realistically, this would only be considered if your weight led to something called buried penis syndrome. But what if you don't want surgery? A safer alternative to liposuction has been developed in recent years called cryolipolysis, also known as cool sculpting or fat freezing. This offers a way to safely and permanently reduce fat anywhere on the body, including at the base of the penis, offering up to 12% or more length gains. More on that in an upcoming video, so make sure to subscribe and click the bell. Remember, most men interested in penis enhancement have normal or even above average penises. That's why most people pursuing surgery stop and feel more confident when they speak to their doctor and find out how they actually compare to others. While clinical guidelines are starting to catch up, and including stuff like penis extenders, the societal pressure and underlying psychological problems won't go away without sex education to dispel myths and more research on the real benefits and risks of penile enhancement. To learn more, watch this next.